Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the Out of Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 121. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. One of these in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Jewel, aka Biggie, uh, Amina, Celestine. It's a whole lot of names, and each one of them names represent a part of me. Um, yeah, Jewel is what I prefer, though. Thanks for having me. Copy that. She goes government on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Salam alaikum, sis. Wa alaikum salam. We gotta we gotta start off right. Copy. We gotta start off right there first. Now let's hit the rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday, two o'clock. E Block Radio Network Tuesday. GFT Radio Network at two o'clock. Two one six to blend on Wednesdays, twelve midnight, eight a.m. eight p.m. And then it's I say podcast Radio Network Friday, ten a.m. West Coast was happening, Dirty South was happening, even though I say it's South Carolina, so, you know, we down there. But we need to get a little more down there. <laughs> now, H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. Roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, remodeling, and now power washing. Uh, if you name it, we kind of making it happen over there at H2H Cleaning. <clears throat> you need to be following us on Instagram only at H2H Cleaning so you can see all of that good work being done. Also, my clothing line is Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Uh, we got the custom jerseys, the custom jackets, the football, basketball, baseball, hockey, the t-shirts, the college shirts, the flip-flops, three versions of the sneaks. Yes, I have my own sneakers, three versions of them. The ones, the twos, and the threes. They're available in all colors. You name it, we can probably put it together. Um, But yeah, you get with us at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Now, this is Both Sides of the Wall Part 6, if you read the description already, the female's perspective. We always hear about how the man... Uh, how he coped behind the wall and how he adapted to life and all of that. We never really get the female perspective. So that's what we're going to give you right here on the How to Hustle podcast, episode 120 with Jewel. And we're going to kind of just break down all of the episodes that we've done so far. So we're going to start off with the kids, how you raise the kids. Again, shout out to my man. Shouts out to my man, Kenneth Thompson. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bro got the job that he talked about to y'all a couple weeks ago on the episode. He got the job with the city. Um, so let's salute him for that one. Uh, and shouts out to Strawberry Mansion United. Now, we did the episode with him and his son talking about the relationship of a father and a son uh, and how to raise kids through pictures and uh, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Uh, talk to us about that from the woman's perspective. So um, for me, I, I wouldn't say um, raising them, staying connected, yes. Um, I stay connected by letters by mail, I mean, by letters, by pictures, um, and phone calls, um, and, and not really phone calls because like, you know, those phone calls is like so fast. It's like, it's, it, it was like business, you know, like who, who's doing what, how, how, you know, like who, where, where the kid going? Because I, you know, um, I did have people, I was blessed to have people in place, um, to help me with my children. So the phone calls was more like where they at, who, you know, um, um, cause I couldn't do much, right. I'm going to be honest. It wasn't much that I could do, um, as far as, uh, financially or physically, you know, emotionally. Yes. Um, I do believe that the letters and the pictures, um, meant a lot, but I want to say that, you know, um, one of, one of my children, um, my middle child, um, she really, um, she, she was angry with me and she really ain't had too much rap for me, you know, like on visits, um, phone calls, she really ain't have much rap for me. Um, so like, like I said, you know, like I, I, I don't think that I was in a position, a position to, um, to raise, to, to do really do much for them because I'm, my mind is I'm doing time and, and, and I'm taking care of me. I got to take care of me. Right. Um, so, you know, yeah, like I, I want to be honest and say that I don't want to take the credit. You know, I don't want to take no credit that, uh, for raising up while I was behind the wall. 
My bad, y'all. I had myself on mute. Um, let me uh ask this first. How many kids do you have for the audience? Four. So I got um 20, 29, 21, 15, and 11. That nigga um, 29? God damn. 29. I had my first <laughs> child at the age of 14. Um, my second child, um, I I I found out I was pregnant. I was behind the wall. And for a short time, um, my mom had passed away. I got the phone. I called home. My mom had passed away. And, you know, going through receiving and all that you do, you see the nurse and all that. I found out I was pregnant with my second child. Um, then I had my, 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 my third baby and my fourth baby. I actually had him. Um, I had him while I was behind the wall. I, I was handcuffed to the bed. Um, and I had him and I went away for four years after I had him. So like I had him and I went away. Talk about that one right there. So how does, and, what is the, what's the thought process to you giving birth? I'm handcuffed to the bed and my baby going to come out. I'm going to hear the cry and they're going to snatch him right away. From Talk to us, describe that feeling in that setting to us. So I want to say it was scary it was it was very scary um it was lonely um because you know my family is real small but we we connect we we always was we always tight right so it was different because this was the first time that i had a child and nobody was able to be there besides the officers that i don't know right um so it was lonely it was scary but but my survival the survival in me said because um me and this is the only child that I have that me and the father didn't have a connection right because my story is again drugs and alcohol right so um me and this child this is the only kid that I have that me and the father was not connected in really no kind of way besides sex so it was like uh you know, it was some people in place, you know, to 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 step up for him. So I, I kind of like threw the towel in. You know what I mean? Like and and right now where I'm at in life, I'm able to be honest with myself and say that. You know what I mean? Because I, you know, I lived for a long time of what society expects me to do. I have to do what they th what they think I do. So I'm his mom. So I should be you know, happy that I had a baby. I should be trying to find, get my son. I should be, you know, but that didn't come until later on. All right. So now this is where I lean on the experience of the episodes because talking to uh, Rock, he was saying about, like you just said, you froze, Rock. Oh, shucks. It ain't my internet. Not no, we good. Okay. And like the connection with your kids is, is so sparse because, like you said, them calls is like a business call. You got four kids you trying to check up on. There's no way in hell I can get through everybody's day in just this 15 minute phone call. Um and, and, and my oldest, my oldest son was like my partner, not my intimate partner, but my partner, like I would call him and be like, okay, you know, um, because before I, I knew that I was about to, I knew that I was about to get indicted. So, and we was living in section eight housing at the time. So what I did was, um, I, I knew that if, if, if they came and got me while I was in the house, the house was going to be gone. So he had just turned 18. So I took him down to the to the housing place and made him hear the household and took me off. So them a lot of the phone calls was with smart. him, a lot of the phone calls with him was gas company, electric company. It was business. You know what I mean? It was like surviving. You know what I mean? Like, mom, how I do this and how I do that. You know. And All right, see, hold that. up. See, that's a see, hold up. Cause see, you glossed over that one. And that's that's a part of the that's a part of the parenting. That's still parenting, even though, like you said, it, it's all about the business transaction. But some kids get through into the fire at 18. Some get through into the fire at 11. Some get through in at 8. 
and you got the responsibility of somebody else to make dinner or get from school or whatever. So yeah. that's a joint like you kind of glossed over because like you said, like that's just really the survival mode kicks in, but it's also parenting skills that you're teaching them how to pay a gas bill, how to right. pay an electric bill, what do you do to manage all of that? What mm-hmm. can this one eat and what can't that one eat? Where is somewhere to make sure you can get enough money to feed everybody? Like those are the things that are essential, especially once responsibility hits you and you wasn't prepared for it. It wasn't like he had the baby and now like he had to get himself adjusted. It was like, nah, mom put us in this situation, but that goes to usually the more responsible one. It ain't always the oldest, it's to whoever's the more responsible one. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, salute to you, salute to yourself for doing that and not even realizing that you did that. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, another And it was that... more and it, and you know what? It was like I said, is is survival. Like 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 thank you, right? You know, cuz is 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 it is a parenting skill, but again, you know, society, the way society look at things, you know, it 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 you know, what? You know, but because of the sub the 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 life that I come up, the scheming and the scheming, right? And to some, it it for me, it it might now, then it was scheming and scamming, but now I can it's is a skill. It was a skill, right? That a much needed skill, right? That some some, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say people with that you know with a silver spoon in their mouth or some people that don't haven't had to survive so right? let me jump in on you <clears throat> everybody's situation is different yeah here on the how to hustle podcast we don't give a fuck about what somebody else decided that okay. was cool for you okay um as long as we ain't talking about like if you say you you now we both muslim so you say you muslim you got to stand on the religious guidelines that you have been given that means yeah. you ain't having no ham sandwiches yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. But you gotta also you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure that you are the best in person that you can be. Yeah. And that's not saying that you get to just take shortcuts, ignore situations and all of that. Cause like you said, you come in a bit you come up in a bad situation knowing how to hustle, no no pun intended, is yeah. a, a a skill that you need. Like you right. just said now, you put your oldest son, we don't need to throw his name out there. Yeah. You put him in a situation where he has to now be in survival mode. So leading to know how to hustle, how to yeah. adjust, how to adapt. He needs to know that. He doesn't need to know that the little fork is to eat shrimp with. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, Because yeah. that's not the reality that everybody has. That's not the situation right. that we all have. Everybody don't have a mom and a dad. Everybody right. doesn't have a mom or a dad. Or they getting raised by, like you said, little brother, big sister, or cousin, or whatever. Some yeah. people just getting raised by the streets. So right. you can't go off with the societal norm was should be or any of that unless you right. say unless you saying like i said i'm a, a muslim a christian or i'm a anything and i'm standing on this then copy you gotta stand yeah. on that because you said that other than right. that don't give me the societal bullshit i don't fuck about that. right not on this side but, of the but, world, but, but but the reason why <laughs> i say that is because <clears throat> I, I i lived for so for so for a very long time the expectations of other people that's why i say mm-hmm. that you know what I mean? So like, like, you know, like then versus now, you know what I mean? Like I lived my life, you know, like the name Biggie came from, you know, I, I did things because I, that's what I think. I thought that they expected from me, you know what I mean? For, for them to love me and care about me or for me to be a part of, you know what I mean? So that's why I, I that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from when I say, you know, society. So yeah, all right. Um, see, this is another thing. When we saying things on here, this is we don't know who listening to this shit. So yeah. it's like I'm always just let's speak broadly to everybody because I don't know how it's gonna hit the nigga that's in Arkansas listening to this yeah. joint. We appreciate the five stars, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or yeah. sis, whoever that is, you know what I'm saying it's listening to the yeah. wheel. Um, but when once you realize like and you be in your young days, all the shit that you be doing be about trying to please everybody else because you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know that like none of that shit ain't really gonna matter at the end of the day. Like, right. like this was something Bore told me. Um, was like you don't even realize like you be trying to hit five different chicks just to impress your man. And at the end of the day, all your man is gonna say is, Oh, damn, you did was the M's good. That's it. Yeah. He don't really care. Like, 
it's not right. really impressing me. Right. Like, unless it's like, damn, we all wanted her. But at the end of it, it's just, damn, you did. Was it good? Right. Or right. that's it. When the once you get to, is over, it's over. Yeah. Once you get to a certain level of maturity, and this is the bad thing is that everybody doesn't get here. Yeah. You don't realize that I wasted a whole bunch of time worrying about whatever motherfuckers think or however motherfuckers felt. This is why, like, you're going to say whatever you're going to say on this episode, and we're not going to attack any of that. I don't know what somebody's going to say in these comments. You know, yeah. we appreciate the feedback. And that's okay, because I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 okay. yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not taking none of this shit personal. Yeah. yeah we're not right. taking none of this that's shit right. personal. You know what I'm <laughs> So yeah, now. I don't, I don't, I don't put myself, you know, in situations where I can't be authentically me. Copy. And you, you know, know me. This is, you know me. This has been me since. That's right. Eighty-seven. Right. <laughs> right. Now, right. All right. This is another one that we did. Relationships. How was it trying to hold on to a relationship, being on the other side? Ah. Uh... I can't I, I can't say um that that I did, that I tried, that I tried to. Because I, I come from a, a, a cold, like, like, you know, a cold heart, like, like not even, you know, like I'ma say once I lost my mother, right? Once I lost my mother, I really didn't care about relationships, whether they were with a a, a a a partner, whether they were with a female, um, what was important, one of the only relationships was that was important was my sisters. Um, what she said, what what, what her, what she, was she, what, what she thought of me, was she, was she, you know, how she was doing and how she was helping the kids and what she was doing, all of that mattered. Nobody else, no other relationship really matter you know what i mean yeah we'll do what i well you know wanted to get mail from from the niggas that i was screwing yeah you know what i mean what i wanted some visits you know like my daughter father i will say out of all the you know the the relationships i was in with men my daughter's father like rolled out with me because he had the same experience you know what i mean so he mm -hmm. you know did what he could i didn't expect I didn't expect anything from 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 anybody. You know what I mean? Because again, um, the hustle in me was like, you know, put one foot in front of the other and keep it pushing. You know what I mean? Do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? All right, see, so, see, this is see this be the problem with some of the episodes would be like, I know too much about the, the person and don't want to be putting everybody's situations <laughs> out for the world here. So let's just talk about your sister. Okay. Because we can, relationships can be a relationship with anybody. Yes. It ain't got to be an intimate relationship, especially once yes. you're in jail. There is no intimate relationship. I grabbed your butt a couple of times yes, on yes. this visit. This yes. is as intimate as we can get. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I can't even walk you to the microwave to heat up these wings. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just talk about holding on to the relationship with your sister, mm. like while you while you was in jail. What mm. is it that? Because now, like you said, you're in a situation where I'm in jail. There's nothing that I can do except provide a listening ear. Or talk to you about whatever the hell is going on in my day because my tunnel vision is just me. I don't mm -hmm. see the electric bill, the gas bill, the cable man, mm -hmm. or any of the pitfalls that hit whoever's home. All I see is me and what I got going on. How mm -hmm. did you and your sister hold on to that relationship? Um, I'm I'm not gonna say the phone calls. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say the phone calls. I'm gonna say the letters. But most importantly, I think, um, like, I'm going to say the tough love, right? Because cause I'm going to say the tough love that, you know, like she had people that she was talking to um, that was supporting her and they was telling her, you got to let her, because I, I, cause I was a fucker. I kept fucking up. I kept going back. I would come home and I would go back. I would come home and I would go back. Right. And she was my only family member. She's the only person I had. So, you know, she was tired. Right. And she was tired. And and and, and, and it, it came to a time where um she stopped sending me money and she was like, I ain't coming up there. And when when I would call and her voice would sound disgusted, like it wasn't that sisterly love. It was like disgusted, like, yeah, 
uh, here, your mom wants you. You know what I mean? Um, You just looked like her when you made that face. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, you know, I, I think that the acceptance of the tough love, because at first I was like, damn, she don't care about me no more. You know, like, you know, like, like I went into a little, like I went into a little hole, like I, I stopped calling and I stopped writing. Right. But then, um, a hum, a humbly love that, you know, like I, I, I was able to forgive myself a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, and say, you know, she tired, you know what I mean? So, so I would, so I would start doing stuff. I would start doing extra send it at a card every week. You know what I mean? I would start doing extra, like, and doing stuff to show her that I appreciate her, right? And, and when I do, when I finally did start calling and she would say, well, I'm going to send you, and I would say, no, don't do it. You know, I'm cool, right? I got a little job in here and blah, 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 such and such might have sent me, you know what I mean? But I think that um, it really didn't start until... Once I once I came home because it my my children is what what makes me and my sister really connect because she got she got her ways and I got my ways and my sister is anybody that know her she can get stubborn and she will cut a nigga off and shut down right so like like the children and I hope I'm answering it right the children is is what is like was like the glue the children was like the glue because if we wasn't speaking we had no other choice but to speak because of the kids you know what i mean so right see again the intimate knowledge of these situations that's how being bored situation be it'd be like you can't let it really go so far because i know at the end of the day she gonna want to call him they go, the kids gonna want to talk, and it's like we're not gonna be on no dumb shit where the kids can't interact because we had an argument about nothing. <laughs> so or now, she might I, say one of the kids needs to, or or where 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 you put? I'll call and she'll say, "Well, where's the birth certificate?" You know, and and then the conversation mm -hmm, yeah. get a little soft. We start saying, "Well, I thought it was um, you sure?" Like, and and even in that voice, that tone of voice, you sure? You know what I mean? That I gotta, you know, like she uh, listened. So now, you know. So now, excuse me, y'all. My bad. That one came out. <laughs> <laughs> so now, this is why it's called both sides of the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't specifically speak for her, but this is being a person on the other side of the wall because you know me. I didn't dealt in these situations a billion times. Mm -hmm. Um. When this individual continues to go back and go back and go back, and it's like you've been taking all of these rides with them, it's like you don't see what I see in you. Mm -hmm. The same way that you just said, I had to forgive myself to understand, like, she's burnt out because I keep fucking up. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that you have to realize is whenever you have a disagreement with somebody, we all... Everybody got their own minds on thought frames, so, you know, we're not gonna always agree on every fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what did I do to contribute to this person not wanting to fuck with me? Mm -hmm. What did I do? How many times did I put them in a bad spot? How many times did I now put my kids on them when they got their own kids to tell with? Mm -hmm. And I can't make it always about she's just on some dumb shit or he's just on some dumb shit. What's the mm -hmm. role that I played in that? That's right. And like you said, if I'm going to keep going back and keep going back and I'm not getting it, <clears throat> I can't get it for you. That's so right. it's like, I've tried all that I can and you still not getting it. So like now I have to just say, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my bad, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's another one. Because we're gonna circle back around. But okay. coming home, when you sitting there, you know, all right, I got 30 days left. Mm -hmm. Did you have a plan? Did you execute your plan? Or did you just come home and be like, fuck it, I'm going to just do it like I've always been doing? So most of my most of my my bids or going, I, I went in and out, in and out. I did small, small, small bids for a long time, right? But in uh, 2012, when I had my son, I went away. Um, I was sentenced to 48 months, four years, right? So I went away for three and a half years. Um, 
So while at the, at the end of my bid, when I did that, um, my date was to come home September 2015. So my plan was, I knew I didn't want to live my life like that no more, right? I knew I didn't want to keep coming back to jail. So um, so I said, I'm, I'm going to get a job because I, I, I could always get a job, but I wouldn't keep the job. I said, I'm going to get a job. I got to get my kids. Um, I got to get a job. I got to get my kids. Um, and I got to, I got to get housing. Right. So those three, I executed it. Right. Ex came home 2015, did my time in a halfway house, um, did everything that I'm supposed to hustled and bustled and did everything I needed to do. But when I, when I, when I, when I got everything, it was like, all right, now what? So now I, so at that time I felt like, um, all right, so now I can reward myself. So I reverted back to using drugs because I thought now I got the house. I got, you know, I did everything I supposed to do. I got a little job. I had the same job for a year now. I could do whatever I spoke, you know, what I can. Um, and I got caught up. I back out in the street, back caught up, kids back, everything back the way it was, you know, the way it was. Um, then I got locked up again. So I was on supervised release. So I got locked up again in 2017. They gave me, they gave me, uh, they gave me a year. They gave me 12 months um, for the violation, right? So this time, this time going in um, was bad, right? It was bad, right? My last run was bad. Um, I had never been in this predicament before. I had never, um, period. I had never been in that, that condition ever so february 4th 2000 february 4th 2018 um the day the, the eagles won the super bowl right i'll never forget um i was in a fetal position at the roundhouse um couldn't wait to get to uh fdc philadelphia at seven for arch to get under the blanket and get some rest because i hadn't slept in days um so this time when i got there i said you know i knew for a fact that I didn't want my life to be like it was that day, February 4th, right? Um, six months in, I was like, you know, I know I'm gonna do it. Cause cause I always had I, you know, the mind frame of I can figure it out. I could, you know, I could do it like this and do it like that and da 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 da, da right. I can out scheme so, the whole, whole situation. Yeah. Yes, right. So so I I I I I um the first six months I didn't, you know, um uh, I really didn't have a plan. I knew that I had to I'm gonna have was gonna have to get housing again. I knew I was gonna have to get my kids because you got my sister in the ear. She tired. I'm tired. You gotta get these kids, guys. But one thing that her and another person that's in my life um that supports my children said this time we're not giving them back to you right away we're gonna take care of them when you get out this time we they stay Hold on. Us. say that one more time you you we we not giving Hold them up. Wait, wait 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 joe say yeah. that for me one more time your drink cut out for a can, second. can you hear me now you You're not now? giving the kids back. Okay. Copy. Right. right. They said they not yeah, giving they not giving the kids back. Um, so so I said, all right, you know, um, all right, you know, I I I I took that as I'ma say with prayer. It ain't had nothing to do with me. Cause leave it up to me, the lifestyle, you know, not the drugs. I could give up, I I, I was willing to give up the drugs, but I wasn't too fine of giving up the lifestyle because it was just in me right so this is um, all you know right you know so i was like um all right bet that'll give me time to get my to get on my excuse me to get on my feet and you know take care of myself you know do do some stuff for myself um what i've what what i've done this time right that i didn't do any other time was rely on a support network allow other people to help me take suggestions from other people know that my way don't work not saying that i don't have choices right and i don't have 
but the way that I, the only way that I knew didn't work. Try something different. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that is what, that is what I've been doing. Um, and I haven't, um, I haven't been back to jail in, um, Came home, I did the year, came home February 5th, 2019. So I haven't been to jail since then. I haven't been to jail since then. PP number has expired. Registration number has expired. Um, yeah. Um, I you probably I I was gonna keep going, but you probably got a question to come with that. Um, but I just, you All know, right, I, I got I live, I live a little a lot different than than I did. See. We don't. I don't want to. I want to go to. I want to. This is the thing about the podcast. The podcast draft through. I don't want to go into extreme detail on everything because that's how you get the person back for another episode. Okay. Um. One more thing I do want to ask you about because I said we're gonna circle back to this one. And I know people are thinking about this. What's the relationship with your kids like now? Oh. After you said I've been home for years straight. Alhamdulillah. Um. The son that I had in prison has been home with me for three years. Um, um, me and me and my children, listen, um, our relationship is not, uh, perfect, but it's perfect. Alhamdulillah. Listen, it's perfect. Like I, like my children, um, they 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 are they feel safe with me right they know if they call me i'm gonna answer my phone they know if i say i'll be back i'm coming back um they starting to trust me yo that's heavy right that's heavy they starting to they trust me now um yeah our relationship you know, and, and 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 they talk to me. I talk to them. One of the most important things for me is being honest with my kids. There's no secrets. Ain't no secrets. Ain't no. I went to school. They know I was booked. They know I was yeah, away. I never, I never been one of those. Yeah. They know. <laughs> they know. Listen, and 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 I had, you know, I had some experience with my daughter who's 15 now with her pick stealing right so and i told her i said you know remember when you used to come see me i'm gonna be coming to see you that's just the that's just the you know the reality of it right i'm trying i'm so you don't my story don't have to be yours that's one of my favorite lines for my children my story don't have to be yours the one thing about kids is they don't understand that you was that age, you was that same size, like that they got all of that because of you or because of the circumstances and situations that you've had them in. Yeah. And like like everybody, just like we were just saying about you, I thought I was slick enough to be able to get through any situation. You think you slick enough to get through any situation. You tell me I wasn't the best that um, ever did it. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that everybody's the hero there. Story. That's what they always say, man. Yeah. And um, that'd be the thing about the kids, though, is like they don't have nothing to compare it to because they don't have those experiences just yet. Right. But, um. That's uh, we're gonna stop it right there. Um. Okay. We definitely gonna bring you back on to, to dive a little bit deeper into this situation because, like I said, we don't really get this woman's perspective of the situation. We mm -hmm. usually always get the men. And so far, I'm on, this is part six of Both Sides of the Wall. This is the first time I was able to get a woman to talk about being in jail. Shouts mm -hmm. out to Sonny. I had Sonny on just talking relationships. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't get the woman's perspective from the other side of the wall. So let me say that I appreciate you for coming on. Thank and you for having me. One more thing before we go, because this is something that I like to throw at people. And somebody like you, I didn't even tell you this before, because like I said, this is, I, again, I don't know how long I've known you. My whole life. Whole life. Yeah. Um, when you hear my name, yeah, I just said, when you hear my name, what do you think? If somebody say, "Yo, you know the boy Hank," what would you say? What would you? What is the thought process that comes? Well, the first thing I'm I say because I've known you, right? The first thing I say um is uh either um Sabor, right? I might say your brother name, right? Or I might say, <laughs> or I might say 
Miss Donna, the, the, down the, ne the next block, <laughs> right? The next block. And now, like, as the years gone by, Sierra Osmond, you know what I mean? You know, or, oh, yeah, oh the podcast, like, all of that, right? The, oh, the podcast, yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, speaking of, uh, my daughter DM'd me, like, probably last week and was like, I need one of these. And it was a, it was a Jersey. It was, it was somebody that we know with the Jersey one that said Bonzo street. Oh, yeah, I was like, Oh yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. I said, Oh yeah. We're going to get them. I just be like, and you know, and, and I definitely, definitely even want to get a Jersey or a jacket. I just be moving and you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, Listen, I be life in. I call it life in. You know what I mean? Life on life terms. I oh, be no. Sh shout out to my man Nutmeg Nah. No Nutmeg Nah is listening. Life be life in is the name of his podcast. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes. That's all the nine big beach. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, you but, know, like we on right. it. Hey, y'all. That was episode 121, Both Sides of the Wall, part six. Jewel, appreciate you for coming on. We are. I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Feel it, feel it.